welcome to episode three of Molem's Racing Travels. We're currently here in a very rainy Estoril for the final round of the Michelin GT3 Le Mans Cup. But before we see how we got on in that race, let's have a look at how I keep my fitness levels up and be put through my paces at the Porsche Performance Clinic. So Mark is probably the one, one of the most high-profile drivers that we'll see here on a fairly regular basis. Obviously, now that he's involved with Porsche, we see him a little bit more frequently now as well. But somebody, you know, a really good example of a driver that takes this side of things really seriously. Um, yeah, a really fit individual that works hard on his fitness and has done throughout his career, really. And then outside of motorsport, runners, cyclists, triathletes, that sort of stuff that come into here for the same sort of support as the, as the drivers do. Johnny, so we'll get you on our, our in-body analyzer. So this is the bit of kit that assesses your body composition, what you're made up of. So it looks at things like your amount of muscle mass, fat mass, um, and, and all of that sort of thing um, is the first test. The second test that we'll do then is on the uh, treadmill or bike, depending yeah, on what really you prefer. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. the Max test. So that will be you having the, the gas mask on. Yeah. We'll be uh, analyzing all that sort of stuff to get a measure of your aerobic fitness uh, and cardiovascular sort of capacity. Um, then we'll move on to some of the reaction stuff. Hand-eye yeah. coordination, you use the BATAC No, before. never. Actually. So we'll be using uh, the BATAC and then our psychotic fixator that look at uh, reaction times. Probably won't let me, them film me doing that, actually. It could be quite embarrassing. Potentially, yeah, we'll see. Um, so yeah, we've got those tests and then strength tests. And yeah, that's the, the, the holistic package of testing really. So Brilliant, looking yeah. forward to it. Good fun. Actually, I'm not looking forward no, to it, but I am yeah, in, in, in a weird, yeah. sort of a masochistic sort of way. There you go. Yeah. So Jack's just put me through my paces. How did I do? Yeah, on the whole, really well. Um, yeah, we've certainly identified some areas that you're really strong, others that you can maybe look to improve on moving forward of today. But as a holistic data set, yeah, you can be pretty pleased on how you did. This is you, essentially. This is your body composition in numbers, and there's a whole host of different facts and figures on here. Um, the ones we're most interested in fall in this set of boxes here. Uh, so we've got your weight, your SMM, which is your skeletal muscle mass. So this is the muscle mass that we can control, uh, the classic muscles of your chest, arms, legs, back, that sort of stuff and that that we can alter with training and nutrition uh, and then your body fat mass at the bottom as well now you'll see that all three of these values are expressed relative to what's considered under normal and over and that's for somebody of your age height and gender so for yes. weight um, you're comfortably within that normal range um, your muscle mass is a little bit over what would be considered normal now that's a good thing um, yes. Within reason, we want muscle mass to be as high as possible in the vast majority of people. Now, admittedly, with drivers, that comes with a little bit of a disclaimer that the weights, it's yeah. weight at the yeah. end of the day, yeah. but it's beneficial weight. So for most drivers, we'd encourage them to have that muscle mass towards the top end of normal, yeah. if not teetering over, which you are, so that gets yeah. a good tick. Uh, and then body fat mass, again, pretty much plumb in the middle of normal. On the strength stuff, you, you, you were really strong um, across the board, really. So our test, test whole body strength, everything from the upper body through to the lower body, the core, um, the neck and grip, the most driving specific aspects of strength, I guess you could say as well. Um, and yeah, across the board, um, you were really strong. Probably, yeah, the one element that we would say you could maybe look to build on was the was the lower body strength Which stuff. Which correlates with what we were just talking about. With exactly, and, and, yeah. and the test that we did for strength, the, the jump test, was looking at a particular type of strength, that explosive dynamic strength, which is similar to when you know you suddenly come into corners heavy on the brakes or yeah. in response to something that you see on the track that might mean you need to suddenly slam the brakes it's that explosive reactive uh, strength that you're looking to test there that um, for you is maybe something that you're less familiar with doing in your training yeah I will and never do any of that so I need to start incorporating that into my training yeah and that's just yeah. one thing that we've been able to highlight here yeah. and so we would recommend that in addition to maintaining what you do currently to keep your standards high you would incorporate that a little bit more just to help bring that up um, that's very helpful. And yeah, that'll take you closer towards the um, yeah, the yeah, 
the ideal standard, which are in, in reality not far off. One of the things that we did, which I was very interested to know the results, as we saw earlier with when I was running on the treadmill with the mask on, which was my VO2 max, yeah. how did I do in that? Yes, you did well. So your score came out at 53, um, which in terms of what we'd set for motorsport athletes would be at the upper range of what we'd expect for drivers. North of 60 would be in the bracket of the highest range that we see in drivers. So in the 50s would be a, would, would be a good score, certainly. Um, so that's a testament to your cardiovascular work that you can do. You can think of your VO2 max as being like your brake horsepower right. and activities like running, cycling, rowing enhance that further. Another thing that drivers need to be very capable of coping with is heat, heat in the car and also you're going to be sweating a lot, losing a lot of fluid, obviously you take it on board with drinking as well whilst you're driving, but how that sweat is managed within your race suit, because obviously you've got no mix underwear and you can see here, obviously it's not long sleeve, it's been cut deliberately short sleeve by Valero so I can use it for the uh, sweat training, but that obviously helps with this special fabric to move the sweat away from your body and, and not allow you to feel quite as heat, it allows your core body temperature to stay lower for longer, which obviously helps massively in endurance in terms of your driving in long stints, sometimes up to two, three hours at a time in a car. In the, in the good old days, I've been in cars that were sort of between 45 and 55 degrees centigrade. So you can see, even getting a sweat on in here, it's about 40 degrees centigrade. So much more comfortable wearing the Valero base leg than even wearing a normal gym top, because you can just feel, it just holds the moisture away from your skin. So although you're sweating, I can feel it on my face. I don't actually feel like I'm sweating on the rest of my body, so when you're in a car, underneath the race suit, it will work even more efficiently, keeping that moisture away from your skin. And something else that uh, a lot of people might not think is particularly important, but it's a driver's feet. And a driver's feet can also be very susceptible to temperature, in particular sometimes in the front engine GT cars. But even in the Ferrari 488 that I race, you get a lot of heat coming through the pedals. And I'm here with uh, Toby Warrington at Adidas Motorsport to talk us through some of the things that they do in terms of looking after a driver's feet. Well, one of the key areas where heat is important is NASCAR. Our NASCAR driver, Brad Kozlowski, won the Sprint Cup in 2012. And we did some development with him where we had some of the uh, heat-proof barrier that they use in the engine bays of Formula One cars. Uh, and we applied it to the outer part of the shoe. And then we ran some tests as well with, um, with a heater um, using good old <laughs> race tech temperature dabs. Yes. And you can see on these that um, uh, one of them was with a standard shoe, the other with a reflective transfer. And you can see the heat difference there. But one of the challenges is trying to develop uh, shoes that that meet all of these conditions because the Formula drivers and short races like the F3 guys or Formula Renault, they still want a very light supple shoe mm. because the brakes are tiny and they you know, they lock them very easily so they're barely touching the brake pedal. Um, but particularly in GTs, which has been the growth area of motorsport, um, it's it's becoming harder and harder to push the pedal as hard as you want. So the easiest way to to tune this is through the sock liner. Here are a couple. This is a sock liner, which is the insert that goes into the, the shoe. Um, and so that's the standard one. It's two mil thick that goes in our shoe. And on the back, we've got a, a carbon plate that's inserted. So it's a one mil uh, carbon plate. On some of these, we've done some drillings to allow more flex, but on the one mil plate, it's yeah. got enough flex yeah, in there, really it, it doesn't thing, really need yeah. it. And then this one's a four mil sock liner. Uh, so again, if you're doing maybe your second or third stint of a 24 hour race, you put in the more padded, stiffer sock liner, you start to lose a little bit of feel at that point, but you don't want to feel what you're feeling anyway. Yeah, yeah, so your feet are pretty dead by then in a 24 hour race. <laughs> So here we are back at iZone. You've seen me here driving their simulator before, but we're now here to actually work with their brake machine to actually work out whether the Adidas boots are better with the insole, the carbon insole, to try and control and help you maintain those pressures. It's not supposed to give you, with the carbon insert in the sock liner, any higher pressure, but it's supposed to actually protect your foot from repeated hitting of a pedal, which you're hitting extremely hard. So at the moment, with these boots on, I can peak quite quickly and I can comfortably get it above seven, although I'm already beginning to feel that pressure in the 
the ball of my foot because you're putting a lot of pressure into the brake pedal. I can already begin to feel that pressure beginning to sort of hurt. Now I'm here with the newer shoe with the sock liner with the carbon insert in it. So we'll see if that feels any different in terms of the brake. And I'm hitting this brake pedal as hard as I possibly can because the brake pressures in a modern racing car, as we alluded to earlier, are incredibly high now. So we'll see how I get on with this boot. Definitely with the sock liner with the carbon insert in it, it actually it's not supposed to help peak, but I actually seem to get a slightly higher peak in terms of the pressure, but also I could feel, even just doing this for five minutes, that my right foot is definitely less numb and less pain being issued into the ball of my foot than it was with my normal boots, which were still very good. Well, Johnny Molem, here we are at Petit Le Mans, your last ever American and last ever professional race. What brought this on? <laughs> age. Um, I've been thinking about it for a while and I've had an opportunity that's come up recently with what I'm doing in, in Europe uh, to set up a, a sort of ma management and mentoring agency with Ivor Dunbar called Red River Sports and uh, I need to build that up and focus on that and bring in clients and, uh, and I felt that if I was racing over here full time or in the WEC or anything like that, any of the major series that take up a lot of my focus, uh, I wouldn't be able to give it the attention it deserved. So I, uh, I felt that the time was right. Uh, I've had a, a pretty good year, good start, hopefully going to be a good finish. And uh, I felt that this was the right time for me to um, call, call it a day, not hang up my helmet completely. I still love driving for the sake of it. Um, so I'll still be driving and still racing in very much in the pro-am side of things. But uh, unfortunately, after 18 years over here, and I was talking to Scott Atherton yesterday, and uh, they made me a lovely presentation in the driver's briefing with the flag. and. Uh, and it was quite touching actually, in fact it was very touching. So, sort of a 16th Petit Le Mans and it'll be my last.